Hello and good Monday morning to you, my bespeckled gnomes of latte foam art glory. Coffee cheers to you. Why am I in such a good mood? The lights are on. <laughs> 10 days later, feeling spoiled. I have hot coffee available in my very own home and I, I can go to the bathroom and take a shower with hot water and wash my face and it's just wonderful. I have done extensive um, developing nation travel, so I'm used to roughing it. But boy, oh boy, it's nice to have hot water. Um, so hooray. Uh, coffee cheers to you. I hope you and yours are well and safe. And enough about that for now, okay? We're just on to happy thoughts. All the happy thoughts. Okay, books I read this week. Uh, the very first one I read, needed it. <laughs> this is Emily Henry's funny story. It is spicy. This is adult rom-com. So brilliant. Emily Henry's just a genius. I still haven't read her... The vacation one that came out last year the pink one that looks like barbie but um i borrowed my friend Haley's copy of this one i loved it witty banter um not really friends to enemies but they grow on each other and roommates and exes and it's just brilliant so enjoyed that needed the brain respite and the giggles i actually laughed out loud and i was very grateful it was a very hard week an eternal week, a very long week. I said I wasn't going to talk about it. But Emily Henry's funny story was great. Okay, next I read, I shared this in my stories and I loved hearing your memories of your childhood um, run-ins with Banicula. Um, I had not read this ever and I happened to order a copy at my local indie bookstore. I'm just looking for the cover page so you can see the title <laughs> since it's not in the front. Banicula uh, by James Howe, Deborah and James Howe. Um, I guess it's 40 years old because it's the 40th anniversary edition. It's got a little velvety cover. Um, I was scared of it as a kid. The covers, ooh, that is scary when his eyes go shiny in the light. <laughs> light, yay! Um, anyway, but um, I just thought, ugh, buddy vampire, scary. It's hilarious. It is narrated by the family dog who leaves the manuscript on an editor's doorstep so that his story gets told, published. Um, and this family has found this bunny at the movie theater and brings it home and the cat does not trust it. <laughs> and so like they wake up in the morning and the vegetables have been drained of all color. And so it is not a flesh sucking bunny vampire. He sucks the juice out of vegetables, I guess. Anyway, it was brilliant. It was hilarious. Um, absolutely wonderful voice narrative it would be a great read aloud um very short less than 100 pages so thoroughly enjoyed that and this this edition's gorgeous and look at those funny little veggie end papers i love it so much and you know stained edges who's gonna argue with that okay so panicula i adored it it's old i had never read it now i have and i loved it okay the only other book i finished this week guys this is the perils of lady catherine de Bourgh by uh claudia gray i um, now, looking at the inside list of books she's written, there was another one I haven't read. I did read The Death of Willoughby, and uh, these are very interesting because they're written in the absolute style of Jane Austen, um, and it took me a hot minute to get into it, but there was a day where I tried five books and couldn't get into any of them and put them all down, and I finally decided to stick with this one. So anyway, thoroughly enjoyed it, loved it. It is Lizzie and Darcy's Kid. Jonathan, and I'm less familiar with Northanger Abbey, but uh, the Tilney daughter, who's probably made up by Miss Claudia here. Um, sorry, someone was walking by a house. It was just weird. Anyway, um, uh, anyway, they are they they come to Lady Catherine's estate to because someone's trying to kill her and she doesn't know who. So um, yes, it's a Jane Austen attempted murder mystery and it was wonderful so if you are an austin fan if you're a mystery fan if you like that style of writing and the meta-ness of it delightful so yes lizzie appears and there's a lot of mr and charlotte collins and their children as well so perils of lady catherine de Bourgh, claudia gray there was um is it on the back the other one that i missed so this is The Perils, and then there was The Murder of Mr. Wiggum and The Late Mrs. Willoughby, which I have not read because I missed it. But anyway, this was great. Okay, um, speaking of the day when I picked up books and put them down, I just wanted to mention this one. It's a DNF. I'm taking it back. The other ones I picked up, I'll probably read later when I'm in a different headspace. But this one, I just wanted to warn you about. Um, it was not for me. <laughs> 
Stalking Jack the Ripper, Carrie Maniscalco, Maniscalco, I don't know how to say it. Um, this was a Barnes & Noble $5 in the cafe pick, and so I picked it up because I thought when we went to the SCBWI conference a few weeks ago, I don't know, eight months ago, whatever that was, um, I thought it would be a fun thriller. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not for me. Um, it opens with cadaver dissecting the first two chapters and very gory. And even though I scanned them, I couldn't handle it. So there's organ harvesting and I don't want to talk about it and it's gross and I don't like it. And so that's going to the used bookstore. So, okay. Just so you know, um, I don't do gory bloody and they're it, it, not worth it for me. Okay. Currently reading so much better. I only started it last night in my hazy delirium of the lights are on and the ceiling fan is on and I'm so happy. Um, I also had cold water for like the first time in forever and that was wonderful. Anyway, this is Ravenfall by Kaylin Josephson. Mm -hmm. Should have read that before now, but here we go. Uh, this is middle grade fiction and yearling paperback. Um, Penguin Random House, you may have seen in my stories last week. They sent me three books. I'm so excited um, that I get to read them and talk to you about them. And so they sent me all three in this series. So um, it is advanced middle grade. In the back it says for ages 10 and up. And it's so good. So I had seen it around, I think it was a Barnes & Noble book of the month pick when it came out in paperback and the sequel came out. There's now three. I think I said that. Anyway, um, I'm loving it. It is a, the house is alive. It is a family of psychics in Oregon and our main character, I'm two chapters in guys, so I only know so much about it, but um, the house is very eclectic in it's gothic craftsman, etc. style and it moves stuff and there's creatures and vampires, I guess, that come to stay here as well as tourists who are like, I don't really know, I signed up for this and um, our girl, protagonist, Anna, um, she, if she, if she bumps into somebody, she sees death. So if the person she touches has experienced or witnessed death, she gets that vision. And so she doesn't like touching people and she accidentally bumps into somebody and sees people being murdered. And, uh, lo and behold, chapter two, our narrator is Colin, who has just arrived at the house and he's in witness protection and he's the one whose parents were murdered. And so I'm guessing we're probably going to have to solve that and, um, have escapades together. So think Coraline, think Wednesday Adams, think whatever you want, but really enjoying this one so far. And um, again, it's a great cover. It just doesn't do it justice for all that is entailed. And I'm super excited about that one. So enjoying reading uh, middle grade. So um, death, violence, monsters, uh, but no other content probably. Cool. Okay. Uh, reading next. Who knows? But potentially. Um, again, in the thriller mindset, but easy access. It's just, we're kind of back after trauma, back in COVID mode of I'm reading rom-coms and mysteries. So this is The Paris Window by Kimberly Bell. I know nothing about it except for the word Paris, thriller, mystery. I wanted to read it. So I'll keep you posted if I actually read that next. And also in my box from Penguin Random House was The Queen the Queen of Ocean Parkway by Servanas Tash. Servanas, sorry, I don't, oh, I did, again, didn't practice. Um, love the cover. There are a handful of illustrations throughout and a skinny middle grade uh, city mystery. So I'm excited. Um, I'm thinking kind of Harriet the Spy, maybe? I don't know. We'll find out, but looking forward to that. And before we lost power, I was a mere over the two days time, 20 minutes in to uh, Miyazaki's latest, The Boy and the Heron. Um, my library didn't have it, so I totally bought the DVD. Um, Blu-ray, whatever. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It is weird, but oh my goodness, the score is so beautiful. So um, I'll at least uh, download those uh, certain, the peaceful songs for my writing background, music, soundtrack, lovely, strings and piano, and my favorite stuff. So, um, enjoying this in its quirky beauty and oddity and surrealism and keep you posted, but I'm literally 20 minutes into it. So, um, I know nothing about that except for Miyazaki made it and I won an Oscar and I'm sure it was great. Okay, that's what I got guys. Hooray for stories. Hooray for electricity. Hooray for hot coffee and cold water. Um, Yes. Also, I will be prepping today for a very important thing happening tomorrow. Uh, Crayon box. If you didn't get my, um, again, it's when I had Wi-Fi. I posted it at like 8.30 on Saturday night. So bad timing, but there's a poll there and news. News. So um, go read that if you're in the Crayon box. And I love you guys. And we'll talk later. Okay.